In this short quick tips video, we're going to look at passage planning and how you get started. Inexperienced sailors tend to get a bit confused about passage planning and what should be included in a passage plan, what should not, how much information there should be, etc. So in this very short video, we're just going to look at the basics and how we get started. So if you've done any structured learning, you'll probably have come across acronym APEM, A-P-E-M. So that's appraise, plan, execute, and monitor. Appraise is really looking from a distance at the passage that you're proposing, making sure you've got all of the charts that you need at all scales so that you can both plan the passage and also implement the passage and implement and plan your pilotage into various ports. You need that information, so you're going to need several charts. Make sure you've got all of the charts you need so that when you plan your passage, you're planning at the right scale. You're not, uh, you haven't got a rum line between two waypoints, which uh, takes you over rocks or shallows, etc. You also need to have information on tides. You need to have information in Almanac or in the pilot book for the ports that you're going from and to. And then you're going to need all your normal bits and pieces, your plotter and your uh, dividers, etc. If you're planning a passage which you're going to implement immediately, then of course the other critical factor is going to be your crew, your weather, and vittling and things like that. I'm not going to go into that information here. So first of all, appraisal. So with appraisal, we get all of the information together that we think we're going to need for our passage. We then use that information to plan, and this is critical. People get a little bit confused as to what information to transpose into their plan, and a lot of people will end up just moving everything that they've got into their plan, which uh, is just transposing information from one page to another. So how do you get started? Look at where you're starting from, put the waypoints in straight line from where you started to where you want to end up, allowing for the physical nature of the seabed and everything else that you are navigating around. Okay, so if you have to miss TSSs, traffic separation schemes, if you uh, have to miss shallows or rocks or stay out of particular areas, then make sure that you do that and you allow for that when putting your waypoints in. Then connect the waypoints with a pencil and a straight edge. And then using the scale in the normal manner on, the, uh, on your latitude scale, walk down that passage from waypoint to waypoint, walk down the passage and establish how far that passage is going to be. So if it was 60 miles, for example, you divide by, you divide the mileage by your average speed. So say your average speed in a vessel, give or take, is going to be five knots. That's only something you will know from experience. Then 60 divided by five is 12. So that's 12 hour passage. Now, of course, it might change because you're going to have tide with or against you. You might not be able to sail the exact rum line. You might have to tack. You might have to jibe. So you're going to have to allow for that later. But this is where you start your passage. So you've got a 12 hour approximate passage. From that, you can then look at the passage and you can decide in the planning phase where you need to be at certain times to hit certain tidal gates. So if you're going through a tidal gate, you need to make sure that you're there at the right time for that tidal gate. And you would check the um, almanac to make sure, and also the chart to make sure that you're in the right place, going in the right direction and at the right time. So that the tidal flow is not, is going to be a benefit to you. And you're not going to end up with a problem like significant overfalls or alternatively, you might end up with tide against you and finding it very difficult to make it through the tidal gate. So after you've done that, you're going to end up with um, either a time you get there if you start with a fixed departure time or a time to leave if you start with a preferred arrival time. It's probably best to work to arrival time in most instances because when you're going somewhere, you probably want to get there at a time for a reason. So then work back from that to get to your departure time. You then need to look at the tidal window or currents or whatever else is affecting you and make sure that those times will work. If they won't work, well, you might have to change your desired arrival time. Time and tide is going to wait for no man. So you might like to get there for 5 p.m. 
but it might be that the tides just don't work for that. So you either have to get there at 2 p.m. or you have to get there at 9 p.m. Okay, so once you know that, you can then look at your departure. Then you can look back down to departure and make sure that if you depart at that time, first of all, it's going to be you're going to be able to get out of the marina that you're in because there might be a tidal gate, a tidal lip or something like that. And you can't get over the marina um, lip. Or alternatively, it might be that you don't want to leave in the dark or you don't want to arrive in the dark because it's a port you don't know. So you need to plan around all of those things. But the important thing is that you know how long your passage is likely to be approximately. You then slide that window of 12 hours, for example, in this, in this example, you slide that window up and down the tidal flow for that period of time, for that day or whatever, to make sure that it gets you through tidal gates and also gets you there at the time when you can get into where you want to go and also that you can leave when you want to leave on that basis. And if you can't, you might have to stop on the way, anchor outside, come alongside on a fuel berth or a visitor's berth, and you'll need to plan for that. But if you plan for it, then it's not going to be a surprise when you get there and everything will be a lot simpler. So hopefully that gives you an indication of how you start a passage plan. Then you're going to execute the plan. So once you execute the plan, you're starting, you're leaving, you'll have got your latest weather forecast, if the weather forecast is wrong for the plan, you might have to change your plan. You might decide to stay home. You might decide to do something else, in which case you might have to implement, sorry, plan another passage plan to another location. You will have along the way, in most instances, ports of refuge so that if you have bad weather or you have a problem with a vessel that you're on, something breaks or your crew are all seasick, for example, or taken ill, you can decide, we'll abandon this plan will go into this port of refuge and here is my pilotage for that port of refuge. You may have a waypoint outside and then you just put the waypoint into your GPS and off you go to that waypoint while you're doing a pilotage plan for the entry. It depends on how thorough you want to be. And then uh, as you're executing the plan, you're also then monitoring. So that's the M. Okay, so as you monitor the plan that you're executing, you can see how you're doing. Are we getting to the title gate at the time I expected? If not, what impact will that have on, on the passage? Is it going to mean we're not going to make it through the tidal gate? In which case, that's really screwed my passage up. We may need to anchor for six hours, four hours, whatever. We may need to uh, change our plan and go to another port. Um, we might decide to, if we're delayed on our departure, for example, to leave and go another route so that we miss that tidal gate. All of these things um, need to be decided upon after monitoring the execution of your plan. And if you're falling behind schedule, you might decide to motor sail for a while. If you're ahead of schedule, well, fine. You just enjoy the sail. And if you know you're going to get there early and you know that you can't get in, you might prepare your crew to anchor for a couple of hours to have some lunch, for example, and then to pull up the anchor and go into port a little bit later. So all of those things make your passage enjoyable and calm and any di diversions from the plan as you're implementing and executing the plan can be monitored and you can make decisions based on where, what the reality is compared with the plan itself. So I hope that that makes sense. APEM, that's appraise, plan, execute, monitor. Make sure to get the basics of the plan in terms of distance sorted out and how long it's likely to take to sail on average. Then you move that window up and down the tidal flow for the time that you're going to be at sea to make sure that you get to the appropriate tidal gates at the right time. And then after that, you need to make sure that you can still leave based on the tide when you leave and you can still get into wherever you're going when you arrive. And if you can't, you might need to decide to go at, to leave the marina early and anchor or take up a mooring buoy outside in deeper water and then depart on time. Or you might decide to get there and then drop the hook and uh, have some supper or whatever and then go in later when you know the tide allows but either way you can plan you can tell your crew what to expect and they will feel a lot more comfortable knowing that it's been planned and you're sailing a voyage according to plan if weather changes if crew or the boat lets you down in some way you can always divert and you should have a plan for that so your ports of refuge etc hope that helps Okay, so if that was useful to you, you might be interested in our micro courses. We've got several, one on tides, one on uh, IRPCS or rules of the road. We've also got one on passage and pilotage planning. And um, so if you're interested in any of these, register on our website, 
freesailingtutorials.com. There is a link in the description below. You can register. Uh, there's no obligation. You'll get 40% off the micro course cost. The courses are all going to be hosted by Udemy, where they offer a 100% money back guarantee if you're not happy with what you get. Um, courses start with the 40% discount at something like just under £12. So it's a micro course on specifics. Um, it's um, fairly thorough and uh, should really help you along uh, in conjunction with any other structured learning you're doing or as revision or maybe maybe you have not done any structured learning and you want to just get an idea of uh, what you do and don't need to know. Okay, so I hope that helps. Uh, go to freesellingtutorials.com and uh, register your interest and we'll get those courses to you, hopefully by the fall or autumn of 2021. Thanks a lot. I hope you found this short video tutorial useful. If you did, please click the like button. This helps promote the video on YouTube. If you've got any of your own tips or experience you'd like to share, or you've got an idea for a video, let me know in the comments section below. And if you aren't already a subscriber, consider subscribing and remember to click the little bell so you're notified when I release my next video. There are various links that might interest you in the description section under this video. Until next time, sell safe.